welcome to Classic Comedy of Old Time Radio. I'm your host, Ron Ecklewarger. Here is another Pepsodent show starring Bob Hope, and it's from the Armed Forces Radio Network. So that means that all the commercials have been removed, and it will be referred to as the Bob Hope Show in the episode. This episode is number 251 in the series, and it originally aired on February 6th, 1945. Here now is Bob Hope and his great cast of regulars. The Bob Hope Show! With Francis Langford, Jerry Colonna, Vera Vague, and Skinny Ennis and his orchestra. And now here he is, the star of the show, Bob Hope! fellas, just like we rehearsed it. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, here we are back in California. California, that's Orange Grove, the little cottage, and man the pumps, boys, grandma's floating out the second story window. <laughs> but it's really great to be back out here where they always have enough wonderful fruit trees, great climate, and beautiful girls to go around. Yes, sir. Muroc, that's the place they went around. <laughs> See, you gotta wait till I finish. I may have a thought somewhere, you know. <laughs> I just arrived from the east. I had to pull strings to get back into California. The Chamber of Commerce made me unravel the arms and legs off my long underwear before they'd let me in. That's the finish. I, uh... I knew we were getting close to Hollywood. I looked out the train window and the gophers had red fingernails and were wearing Max Factor makeup number 10. <laughs> and the conductor wired the station master that Bob Hope was on the train. He wired back, we need the equipment. Come on in anyway. <laughs> My fan club was supposed to meet, but half of them were sick and the other guy had to stay home and take care of them. The porter was a little rough handling my luggage. Skinny Ennis fell out of my golf bag twice. And I'm not saying how much I tipped the porter, but he kept pointing at me and saying, is this jip really necessary? <laughs> and when I got back to Hollywood, I found out they were giving Frank Sinatra another physical. The report on his first physical came back stamped, we don't believe it. <laughs> I don't know if Sinatra's really too thin to be in the Army, but he's the only guy I know who can go AWL by hiding behind his own tie. But can you imagine us going from that snow back east to this dry desert? So dry out here, the rabbits have humps in their backs and they can go seven days without water. <laughs> you know who Gravel Gertie is, don't you? She's the old girl that looks like a cross between a Muroc debutante and a sergeant in bloomers. <laughs> here comes our man, Skinny Ennis, doing There Goes That Song Again. Do it, Skinny. There goes that song again We used to call it our seven days We fell in love when we heard it play Over and over and over and over again I still remember when I sang the words and it made you mine I still a kiss and replaced mine Over and over and over and then We drifted apart You walked off with my heart It's funny how one listens Stop me reminiscing I soon forget that I told myself when you slept so long That I was wrong Let go of that song again
didn't forget that yet. I told myself when you said so long, I was wrong. When you said so long, there goes that song again. Thank you very, very much, Francis. That's really wonderful. Sleigh ride in July. And you were very fine in there, too, Skinny Boy. Thanks, Rob. How you doing, Bob? Oh, fine. You know Skinny Ennis, our meager beaver. Say, uh, you know that was great accompaniment you gave Francis on that number? Well, man, I love to accompany people. Yeah, what about that Muroc pigeon you were accompanying last night? <laughs> Not so good. She lost me in the eighth ball. Say, Bob. <laughs> say, you know. They had that many around here? Oh. <laughs> I got a question to ask you there. The, the trip's over, ain't it? Of course the trip's over, Skin. Well, man, when are we going back to California? <laughs> well, Skin... <laughs> Skinny, this is California. It is? Sure, this is the land of sunshine and flowers. You know, Bob, they got a PX here. You better start smoking them regular cigarettes again. <laughs> well, hiya, Francis. Hello, Bob. Hiya, Skin. Well, I gotta rehearse the next number. Guess I'll make myself scarce. You're too late, Skin. Your mother beat you to it. <laughs> but wasn't that nice of the boys to throw us a party, Francis? Yes, Bob, but when we go to those parties, I wish you wouldn't stick so close to me all the time. Oh, you mean the temptation's too great. No, it's just that I do much better when they don't think that my father's along with me. <laughs> That isn't gray in my hair. The Joshua trees are molting right now. Say, Bob, did you notice all the wax at the party? Yeah, Francis, and believe me, these wax are doing a great job here. In all kinds of work. <laughs> Even as grease monkeys and mechanics. Say, let's show the folks a little scene, Francis. You be a wax mechanic working on a plane, and I'll be the pilot. Some okay. B-25 music, Skin. <laughs> Nothing can stop the Army Air Corps except the weather. Say, well... 
Well, here I am, a pilot. Just think they're going to let me make my first solo flight. And after only 18 years in ground school. <laughs> Gee, me a second lieutenant. Maybe these bars and maybe these bars in my coat are enough. The ones in my underwear keep scratching my shoulders. I told you, wait till I finish the joke. <laughs> well, here's my plane. Hey, you get out of there. I gotta take off and I'm late. Well, don't let it worry you. You look like you've been off for years. <laughs> Well, a whack, well stacked. Mmm, a Louis full of hooey. Well, so you're one of those whack mechanics. Tell me, what can I do about a loose fuselage? Have you tried a girdle? Uh, <laughs> gee, a pretty gal like you stuck up here in the desert. How do you stand this hot wind? Well, there's much I can do about it. You outrank me. I'd like to date you. I bet you know all the answers. Yeah, and I bet you know all the questions. <laughs> see, I see they had grapefruit in mass this morning. Don't laugh. Them regular helmets cost eight dollars. <laughs> you must be one of these hot pilots. Am I? Yesterday I did four outside loops, gave her the gun and the twelve barrel rolls, went into a power dive going eight hundred miles an hour, then suddenly something went wrong. What happened? What'd bailed, you do? I bailed out of my link trainer. <laughs> In a crash? In a crash? Whatever gave you the idea that I crashed? Well, don't tell me you were born with that nose. <laughs> well, what's wrong with my nose? Nothing. Tell me, is it retractable? Well, it makes a good shoehorn anyway. Listen, Hubba Hubba, uh, why don't you get <laughs> off? You're all ready to fly. I sure am. Okay, contact. Contact. Fresh. Well, how'd I know you meant the plane? <laughs> okay, I'll take off. You sure you got the motor all repaired? Sure, it's all repaired. Okay, I'll start her up. Pat, Pat. <laughs> Goodness, I guess I should have used larger bobby pins. Yeah. <laughs> fenced me in, they locked the front gate, threw the key out here in the middle of the desert, and gave me a ten-day bivouac to go find it. <laughs> Man, what's a long, lean, hungry-looking Texas cowpoke like me is doing fenced in at this here Muroc for anyway? Well, I get so lonesome for them Texas cows that last night I went out and tried to milk a cactus plant. <laughs> Wish I was back in Texas with them 10,000 square miles of prairie. I sure feel crowded here in Muroc with only 9,000 square miles of nothing. <laughs> Don't fence me in, brother. Man, we got so much room out there, you can get on your horse and just keep riding till you get red in the face. Man, every time my sergeant goes by, I think of the panhandle. <laughs> yes, sir, I take one look at his pan and think how I'd like to handle it. I remember I used to lie out in the prairie and look up at that Texas sky full of stars. Oh, it looked like a big pinball machine. Then the draft board came along and tilted me. <laughs> Good old Texas. Back there, men are men and women are women. And what's more, they don't keep them separated. <laughs> uh, 
And honey, don't you worry about me going around with other gals. In this their army camp, they don't even let you think about gals. Every night at 12 o'clock, the CQ comes through the barracks with a flashlight, and he wakes up anybody that's got a smile on his face. <laughs> I got a date tonight. Got a date in Lancaster, and I think I'll go AWOL. There's a sentry. I don't care. It's dark, and he can't see me. I'll fool him this time. Hello, sentry. Who goes there? Oh, I'm just a whack. Whack, huh? Well, how about a kid? Okay. You should try Blue Blade. <laughs> Put that gun down, Sentry. You gotta let me out of here. I got a date in Lancaster with an angel. <laughs> Helped him out, didn't I? <laughs> Send me off to heaven and I ask you Gentlemen, a certain amount of civilian flying is being permitted now, so Bob takes off for a little spin here at Muir Rock. Bob already has a hundred hours in the air. <laughs> Took the stork that long to find somebody who would accept him. Come on, boy. And now we find Bob and Skinny Ennis flying over the airfield. Well, Skin, here I am sitting in the pilot seat. You know, to be a flyer, you got to have brains, courage, and backbone. I know, Bob. Just keep it on the automatic pilot. Come out of that incubator and say that. <laughs> well, I guess I better check with my crew. Pilot to co-pilot, everything okay? Roger. Pilot to tail gunner, everything okay? Roger. Pilot to navigator, everything okay? Herman. <laughs> Must be a spy. Say, you know I like flying at this level, Skin. The altitude doesn't bother me a bit. That's great, Bob. 
And now you better step on it if you want to beat that train to the crossing. <laughs> hey, did you hear somebody? That must be a stowaway aboard. Yeah, well, Miss Vera Vague, that's what... <laughs> Well, Miss Vague, our little fossil. Oh, well, Mr. Hope, our big nozzle. <laughs> oh, well, goodness, if, if you're flying this plane, Mr. Hope, you better watch that gas needle. Oh, oh that's silly in isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> never forget a face, do you? Oh, no, not very often. Not when it's attached to a body like that. Say, <laughs> hey, now that you're here, you can be our navigator, Miss Vague. You know the country around Muroc Field? Oh, yes, yes. I've been prowling around it for weeks because I don't know it quite as well in the daylight. Yeah. <laughs> Vague, don't you think you ought to quit that before your ears get too pointed, huh? Oh, <laughs> you dear boy. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Hope, why don't you take your hat off and show them you're up dry lake, California's dry brain. Hey, where are we, Bob? Well, I wonder if this is Muroc. I'll call the control tower. Pilot to control tower. Pilot to control tower. Yeah, shut up. It's Muroc. I'm coming in for a landing. You can. What's the matter? No room? No runway. No. Oh, cut it out and let me talk to a first lieutenant. Control tower to pilot. Hello. Did yeah. you make an appointment? <laughs> no, I didn't make an appointment. How soon can I land? Well, just a minute. I'll look in my book. Hmm. Uh, shall we say Thursday afternoon at three? <laughs> Listen, I can't wait that long. I'm out of gas. Oh, that's different. Why didn't you say so? And I can land? Of course you can land. When? The first thing tomorrow morning. <laughs> no use. We'll have to jump. No, there's nothing to get excited about. I'll go first, and you two be sure to follow me, because I've got the parachute. <laughs> well, we're out of gas. Come on, Skin. Come on, Miss Vague. Let's all three hold hands and jump. One, two, three. Well, I'll take another look in the gas tank. <laughs> hey, Bob, I ain't going to jump. The last time I tried, I had too much trouble. You had trouble? What happened? Man, at 2,000 feet, I got caught in the cross wind and stayed there for three days. <laughs> Well, you jump first, Miss Vague. Oh, all right, here I go. Oh, goodness, I just missed that cactus plant. I missed it, too. Bullseye! Oh, Mr. Hope, look, our plane's falling. Hey, Joe, get back up there! Well, here we are, way out here on the deck. Goodness, everything's so wild out here, and we're all alone. Miss Vague, it's no use. We're too far from the camp. They can't hear you. <laughs> oh, bless your heart, Joe. <laughs> you know, you'll never be lonesome out here. You can always shake your head and give the mating calls for rattlesnake. <laughs> Oh, isn't this desert air wonderful? I feel like a new man. Me too. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Bob, look at him. It seems to be a big battleship right in the desert. Yeah, that's just a mirage skin. I'll show you. I'll run right at it. <laughs> well, don't stand there. Help me find my head. We'll have to hit back to the airfield, Mr. Hope. Do you think one of these... Mr. Hope... Oh, look. Look. There's Maneuver. an army on maneuvers. Happening! What do you know? It's me. <laughs> Professor Cologne, are you in charge of this army? Yes, Hope, and I'm only a general. <laughs> if you're a general, why don't you have four stars on your shoulders? No shoulders. <laughs> well, if you don't have shoulders, what holds your coat up? Hangers. Ah, but I am a general, Hope, and my army's right behind me. Alone, I don't see any army behind you. You don't? No. Down these Mojave windstorms. <laughs> well, Colonna, how are the maneuvers going? 
Well, not so good. We're short of tanks, but it'll be better next week. How do you know? They're drafting W.C. Field. <laughs> Colonna, you're a fine general. You're supposed to wear your medals on your coat. Why are you wearing yours in the seat of your pants? Know these boys pretty well, don't I? <laughs> oh, by the, by the way, Colonna, you remember Miss Vague, don't you? Yeah, I told you to stay out of the, uh, the demolition area. <laughs> Wait there. Uh, can't you be nice to me? I'm quite attractive, you know. I have a perfect hourglass figure. <laughs> yeah, that's an hourglass figure? Yes, it is. What are you trying to do? Show what time it is all over the world? <laughs> oh, you shaggy lip face, you. <laughs> How long did your brain circle your head before they gave up and landed in another field? <laughs> it's not dilly down here now. Pardon me, folks, while I give some orders to my regiment. <laughs> Forward, March. Halt. About face. Forward, March. Halt! About face! Forward, March! Halt! About face! Forward, March! Oh, General Colonna, why, why, why are you having those men pound back and forth in that one spot? Making a tennis court. <laughs> Look, Professor, what's your racket way out here in the desert? Secret weapons, Hope. I've just invented a robot bomb. Now we have a bomb like the Germans. V2? Yeah, yeah, V2! Y- yeah. <laughs> Put that joke in for the morons. The idiots can't have everything on this show. And I also have invented the most powerful gun that's ever been invented, Hope. Powerful gun? Does it have a lot of recoil, Kelowna? Does it have a lot of recoil? See my right shoulder? Yes. It used to be my left shoulder. Oh, Kelowna, you stoop. Well, how do you get your cigarette? Goodness, Professor, could we see a demonstration of a secret weapon? Well, I... come on, Kelowna, light the fuse. Okay, but don't tell anybody All right. the Kelowna rocket bomb is about to take off. I'll just pour this fuel in the engine. It's a very special fuel concocted for me by some island natives. A special fuel, Professor, concocted by some island natives? That's right. I hope the mix is right. And now I'll light the fuel. <laughs> Professor, what happened? Too much rum, not enough Coca-Cola. <laughs> if the night is day could sing like you, they'd sing much sweeter than they do, for you brought a new kind of love to me. And if the Sandman brought me dreams of you, I'd want to sleep my whole life through, for you brought a new kind of love to me. I know that I'm a slave, you're the queen, but still you can understand that underneath it all, you're a man. And I am only a man I would work and play the whole day through I could hurry home to you For you brought a new kind of love to me I'm a slave, you're the queen, but still you can't understand That underneath it all, you're a man, and I am only a man I would work and slay the whole day through I could hurry home to you, so you brought a new kind of love to me the Armed Forces Radio Service.
show was broadcast from Muroc, California, as you heard them say repeatedly during the show. The base they were at is now called Edwards Air Force Base and is one of the major military bases in our country. It is interesting to listen back 75 years ago to see how it was referred to then and to think of how things have changed. Please send your questions and comments to host at classiccomedyotr.com. Come back next Wednesday for another episode of the Pepsodent Show starring Bob Hope and check in on Friday for the next installment of The Life of Riley. Until we meet again, in the words of Yogi Berra, you can observe a lot by just watching. <laughs>